the Good Luck High Five, episode 351. Can you believe it? I can't. That's a lot of episodes. It sure is. That You are listening to this podcast, whether for the first time or for the 351st time. Ooh, I because it is a are. podcast about Magic the Gathering, and maybe you play it. Whether you're sitting at home jamming an arena or you're heading out to your local game store for a Friday Night Magic, we are here for you. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And on today's show, we're going to talk all about our new standard environment after Throne of Eldraine. That's right. What is it like? Is it a marshy bog? Is it a windswept plains? It is a, is it a, a fiery furnace? I thought you were going to say windswept heath. <laughs> <laughs> No, not quite. No, not quite. Not in standard. <laughs> no, unfortunately. Or fortunately, whatever side of that argument you uh, fall on. You fall on, yes. But there are tons of new decks out there, and we're going to take a look at kind of what the metagame looks like. If you're thinking what kind of standard deck might be for me, mm-hmm. we're going to help you answer that question and kind of know what to expect when you uh, boot up Arena and you're like, what will I be playing against in standard? And also, by the way, Mythic Championship 5 coming up this weekend. This very weekend. So, so we can talk about some of the competitive. Yeah. Who we think is going to take it all down. And what decks they're going to be playing. Exciting stuff. So this is like what the best in the world think is the best in standard right now. So if you want to get out there and win, if you want to do some winning, maybe consider their lists. We're also going to talk about some sillier lists that I just have fun with. All right. (laughs) But before we do that, we have to thank, first of all, you, the patrons of this show, for making it possible we so appreciate everyone who contributes um we love being able to bring you stuff like the uh like our patron hangouts yes which we still have to schedule for this month as we mentioned last week our schedules this month are a little busy so we're trying to land on a day when hopefully we can do a little bit of challenges and a little bit of a patron only hangout on the same day yeah but to make sure that we can still bring you all those things yeah let's uh let's have a chat after this episode and figure out that day we'll post our patreon yeah, discord we'll figure it out <laughs> Schedules are fun. Aren't they the, just the most fun? They're the best thing about being an adult, for sure. And, you know, actually, we have to update you all on something very, very important. Yes. Related to this. Last episode, I said if we got 10 new patrons uh-huh. by the time we recorded this episode, that Megan would have to buy me a package. Wait, I said that I would do it. Because oh, you said how, you think that is, we could, and I said no. Oh, that's right. We can't possibly. And if we did, I would purchase okay. you a bag of So it was pumpkins. a bet. It was a bet. The What's a bet? A pumpkin bet. Yeah. <laughs> a bet, a bet, a pumpkin bet. <laughs> um, and uh, I have great news to relay that yes. we not only surpassed our goal of 10 new patrons, we in fact got 15 yeah. new patrons. So I certainly owe Maria pumpkins. Pumpkins! Reese's pumpkins. Yes. Um, the last, like the last half of those, it came this very morning. That's right. So I did not have time. I stopped by Cub, but they did not have them at my local Cub. That is unbelievable. I know. How could they? I know. Get your act together, Cub. These are the, literally the most delicious snack that exists. So next episode, we will have pumpkins. Oh, I'm so excited. I will bring them in that day and not bring them to the office beforehand because otherwise the, the mouse. mouse will eat them. Yeah. Did we let you know last episode there's a mouse in here? I think that we did. The mouse is still here. It ate some of the chips that we had for a hot chip challenge. <laughs> Will that mouse survive those chips? Maria doesn't think so. I think so. it's dead. <laughs> I don't know. I Maria has spent all morning saying that the mouse is dead because it ate hot chips. <laughs> I don't hear it. I don't hear it, Megan. <laughs> it's also it's in other people's offices sometimes. It's not always in our office. <laughs> Well, I mean, if, if I don't know, if a mouse got its mouth on those, I just feel like how could its intestinal system survive? <laughs> it's not built those for it. Spicy TGI Fridays hot fry I Cheetos. Mean, it's a mouse. Like it can, it sh- it should be able to decide for itself what it can and cannot handle. So, like maybe a mouse's constitution is stronger than yeah. a human stomach. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm, that's why, like, it can also, chew through wires. Also, if a chip killed a mouse, would you eat that kind of chip anymore? <laughs> That's a great point. No, no, I would not. But that, that being said, I do still drink like Diet Coke, which if you put like something in there within 24 hours, is like dissolved or whatever. Yeah, you know that's what true. I mean? So All maybe right. I'm a real maybe liar, <laughs> big time liar. Anyway, the point is, thank you so much for everybody who signed up as new patrons as part of the pumpkin patron challenge. Oh, I can't believe I just thought of that name now. It's too late. Um, but you're you're so wonderful. A lot of people yeah. said they'd been putting it off. And then, uh, then the Reese's pumpkins were like reason enough for a reason i mean the pumpkins are perfect 
right? Because they when it comes down candy. to it, we've talked about this before. That ring around the end of, end of a Reese's is, is the worst part. It's garbage. It's the worst part of a Reese's, and the pumpkins or like the Easter eggs just do away with it. Yeah, they just take away the worst part. Yeah. So thank you for everybody who understands that I need those in my life mm-hmm. and became a patron because of it. <laughs> if you want to support my pumpkin problem, we look forward <laughs> to eating them next week. <laughs> we need twenty new patrons for making to buy me another bag of Reese's pumpkins. <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> Wow. Slash GLH wow. magic. Well, I, I don't, I, this one I truly don't think can happen. I also. Do you know what? But you never know. I'm going to, like, you know how they have, like, the oversized candy bars? Yeah. Is there an oversized Reese's pumpkin? That would be insane. <laughs> I think they actually do exist. Should we, should we search it? I'm going to yeah, search Google it right it. now. While you talk about Card Kingdom. Yeah, so Card Kingdom is another sponsor we have to thank, and uh, they're so amazing. You can head to cardkingdom.com slash GLHF for anything you need in your magical life. And also, of course, they're celebrating their 20th birthday this month and have special promos going on throughout the month. You can always say that you want a Good Luck High Five token or sticker in your order. They'll put one in there for free, but also this month you get a foil squirrel token, which I can't think of anything better than a foil squirrel token. Uh, it's my favorite kind of token in creature type and magic. And it's foil, which is something that I'm a sucker for. Um, by the way, the chalice, uh, we have an update for you on that. Also coming up the end of this month on the 27th is going to be an awesome magic tournament featuring some of the biggest personalities in magic, playing cards for a great cause, the Serious Fun Children's Network, which sets up camp for sick kids to go and have a great time. Megan will be playing in that tournament. Yes, I will. And uh, she is going to give us an update on her draft, how that went, because... In the tournament, they're going to be playing Standard, as well as this format called Block Party, uh, which is a neat kind of modern constructed format. Yeah. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. And so you have all helped us raise money for that. So thank you all thank so much. You. BT Dubs. We were in the lead. Yes. Um, we, as of this I, think weekend, I think that we probably still, still are. Lead. And I was like, am I surprised? No, because we have the best listeners. Obviously. Who want to do nice things. Yeah. The, and they're that's great just people. true. And you put us in the lead with fundraising, which helped Megan get first pick in the draft yes. for Block Party. So thank you Obviously, so, so much. I slammed that Theros. Yeah, Megan t- chose Theros. Great choice. Um, it has some other, like, weird... I'm trying to figure... Let me read the other ones, because it's not just Theros block. Oh, you get, you, some other, you get some other blocks in there with Theros? Well, it's not full Theros block. It's like, so Theros... Okay. Plus Ravnica Allegiance... And fifth dawn. Okay, what's those are my fifth three. Dawn? I don't even know. Before man. our time, we're gonna find we're out. We're gonna though. find out what's in fifth dawn. I can't wait to play Thassa. Oh, it's gonna you be so know good. I can't wait to play Thassa. Are you gonna play Mono Blue Devotion? I might. Why oh, not? So good. Why not? So yes, you are all responsible for giving Megan her pick in that wonderful block party draft and going to construct some wild modern deck out of that. And also you gave a lot of great money to wonderful causes. The first uh, 40 people to donate $50 or more also get that Card Kingdom and Good Luck High Five Thank You present which is a gift bag with a booster, or if you're overseas, not a booster, something else. Um, plus, uh, like, an awesome pin in the bag itself, etc. a whole bunch of stuff in there. And we haven't hit that number yet for the first 40 people, so you still have time to donate $50 or more, and you get that thank you gift, as well as a warm feeling in your heart for donating to Serious Fun Children's Network. We have a goal of $2,000. We're not there yet, so we still need your help. Okay, I can't find a giant Reese's pumpkin. Maybe it's I'm, very disappointing. Maybe I'm out of my mind. Maybe it was an egg. There are bats. If I <laughs> maybe Reese's I invented it because bats. I just really want it. Yeah, like to I exist. want it to exist. I agree, but <sighs> I, it does not appear to. Okay, well Reese's, get on it. This would sell like wildfire. <laughs> it would sell like like one giant like a giant pumpkin. pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, that's a disappointment. Sorry to bring you all a little bit of sadness. Well, this what are you going to do? There's just no a, such thing. Just the facts. Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown was wrong all these years. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's time for a standard corner. That's right, it's just a standard corner. It's your average everyday corner. 90 degrees. It always was and it always will be. Go stand in it. <laughs> Whoa! Do you ever have to get told to go stand in the corner? What? No. Is that like a thing? <laughs> Why is that a thing? Why is it a know. punishment? <laughs> you know, it's separation from the, the group. Isolation. You, you're being isolated from the herd? You can't put kids in solitary confinement, so that's the best you can do. <laughs> get in the hey. corner, hey. Barry. 
can we put this kid in solitary? <laughs> nah, you can only just put him, go put him in the corner. The, in my grade school, the punishment was you got like a mark next to your name on the board, I think. Wow. Oh no, you had to circle. Spooky. On your desk, that's what it was. You had to circle something. You had like, you know, how many outs? You had three. If you got three X's, you had to go to the principal's office or something. Oh, wow. And one time I had to circle one and I wanted to die. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, I don't remember what ours was, but then again, I was so well behaved. I do like, I did vividly remember any time that I missed, like, oh my God, any time I got punished for something. Yeah. The worst day of my life, likely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yes, you will not be punished for playing this new standard environment. I said a swear in art class in third grade. <gasps> what swear? I can't say it on here. But can you say what it's closest to? Um, it's like. <laughs> Describe the swear, Megan. It's like a pretty bad one. <gasps> really? Especially if you consider it being in third, third grade. grade. Like I, I'm um, interested. I called someone an, an MRF or. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Holy cow! I was expecting you to say like you know the other word for a donkey no. or where bad people go told, when they die. I told you it was a bad Holy one. Holy crap! <laughs> That is amazing. Oh, I hadn't thought about that in a long time. I am I, proud like, of you. Vi- I now vividly re- like I still Whoa. remember being just <laughs> horrified. That's so good. That is so good. If I was a teacher, I'd just stand up and slow clap you. Like I was such a good student the rest of the time. I don't think I got in trouble for it because my the teacher just, just like shocked. could not believe it. Just shocked. <laughs> I had done it. That's that's wonderful. I was also a very very big potty mouth, as oh. will surprise maybe nobody. When I was young, I I hung out with a lot of teenagers, so they had a bad influence yeah. on me. You know what they say about teens? Bad influence. <laughs> that's really great. Wow. Well, Anyways. kudos to third grade Megan. Oh, uh, yes. Out there swearing <laughs> it up. So we're gonna use our guide for talking about standard. We're gonna start off with Mythic Championship Five deck lists. Ah. Because as we said, these are the things that the pros think are the best things to play in standard. And there's definitely a thing that they think is good. That's right. And, and it, that is Golos. Golos. Field that, of the Dead. The old yield Field of the Dead. You know what? It doesn't need a, what's it called? Scape shift to be good, it turns no. out. Um, so this deck is primarily Bant, um, and it has the classic tons of ramp, arboreal grazers, growth spirals, etc., etc., circuitous root. Yeah, you're just putting a bunch of different lands into play as mm-hmm. quickly as humanly possible. Yep. And then <sighs> you start making zombies, and it's just wild, like... Because it starts off so benign, you're just like, great, oh, this cool. deck's not doing anything. Or like the first time it happens, it makes like one zombie, right? You're like, and you're, you're like, like whatever. Great. But then the next turn, like they they play like a circuitous route, and all of a sudden there's like so many zombies on the other side of the battlefield. Yeah, Field of the Dead. In case you're unaware, <coughs> makes a two-two zombie every time you put a land into play, it, as long as you have seven different uh, lands with different names. Yeah, in play currently. And this deck will like regularly. It's seventh land will make a zombie. Yes. Yeah. And circuitous route is a great way to make sure yes. that this happens because you can go search you can go out get your those field of the dead and, and get your of the dead, yeah. random whatever lands that you require. Exactly. But I think the biggest thing why this deck is so powerful is not only does it have a late game engine that is unstoppable yeah. because there's no way to kill lands in this current standard format. Yeah. Um, other than... Uh, there's like a red, there's the classic like red destroy a land. Yeah, part. like that. And um, what am I thinking of? Assassin's Trophy or oh, yeah. you can steal it with something. You can steal but... it with Oko. <laughs> Wait, what? I think I saw someone steal someone else's Field of the Dead. You can steal it with Agent of Treachery. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Is that what you're of. thinking of? Maybe. Yeah, Agent of Treachery you can oh, steal. Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. But Yes, that is what I saw it happen with. But all of these things only deal with, um, like, one at a time. Yeah. And you might still have other Field of the Dead in play, and they're, s- like, f- fairly slow. Yeah. Um, so basically there's no real way to, to stop, stop it. The, this from <laughs> happening, okay? Not only do they have that, they also play the, the namesake deck, uh, namesake card of this deck, which is Golos Tireless Pilgrim. Yes. Which can drown you in card advantage late in Very the game. Very quickly. Yeah. It's just a big 3-5 as well. Yeah. Um, plus, you, you're playing, you know, a million colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can. You can play four-color Golos. This, this is Bant Golos in the iteration we're looking at You're obviously playing Hydroid Crisis. Yeah. So you're drawing a billion cards. You're yep. gaining all the life back that yep. maybe your opponents you have had tried to deal attacker. with you. Huge attacker. Yeah. Uh, some of these decks are playing, actually, the giant. Yeah. <laughs> from, the, from New Eldraine. 
Beanstalk Giant. Beanstalk Giant. Um, you have access to Deputy of Detention in your sideboard, mm-hmm. which is pretty excellent removal. Obviously playing Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time, a really great way to get, make so sure many, you hit your lands. I mean, one of the reasons, we've talked about how popular green has become yeah. in this new standard format. Once Upon a Time, which is the card that is traditionally one in a green right yeah. if you're going to cast it yeah. and you look at the top five cards you can put a permanent from amongst them into your hand but if it's the first spell that you've cast in the game it's free yeah and it's just so good it's so good and i think it's a big reason why we've seen so many green decks and among them this speaking of uh agent of treachery this deck also plays that because yes. if you're ramping you might as well ramp into something nasty that just yep. steals something from your opponent why not just have a seven mana <laughs> Theft. <sighs> to fairy time raveler, of course. Yep. Played in this to bounce things and help you kind of keep on tempo. Time wipe. Time wipe to wipe the board. Kenrith the returned king. This is actually my favorite card yeah. that they play because what Kenrith can do is help you deal with basically whatever you need to deal with. Yes, because you have all of those activations available to you. All of Kenrith's activations you can choose from. Oh, I'd like to like just casually gain 10 life back that I lost. I would like to give my zombies the zombie haste. I would like to whatever. Kenrith does it all. Yeah, I I think that's my favorite uh, card in this deck. Basically, (sighs) what I'm trying to say is this deck has no weaknesses. (laughs) It's basically it has it all. It literally has it all. The only thing it doesn't have is speed. But I feel like these other cards we we mentioned make up for that, like Hydrate Crisis, like Kenrith gaining new life. Yeah, I think it's very true. It's it's wild to me because so when we first looked at the the very first Magic Pro League split, um, a division of this split, the Throne of Eldraine split, which was two weeks ago. Yes. Um, which was sort of the very first look that we got a lot of, at a lot of standard decks. Yeah. I saw this deck lose a bunch. Okay. Right? Why, like, I wonder. Did it, did it even win the split? Um, I'm trying to think. I remember watching um, uh, the E-League with Seth Manfield playing this deck, and he yeah. swept it, went 6-0. Yeah, which that is makes not sense. And maybe they've, but... like, tweaked it to make it better. Yeah. But I remember watching it, and I think of the matches that I watched, I watched the two players out of those eight that were on it both lose. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it's not unbeatable. And certainly yeah. now, even after these deck lists have been submitted from the championship, people have this in, in their sights, yeah. right? It has a huge target on its back. And I think there are two ways to beat it. One is going under it by being faster, yeah. which we said is hard because it does have life gain. And two is beating it with evasive threats. So that means flyers. Yeah. So that's Although what, it's difficult when they have that hydroid crassus. Yeah, going the hydroid crassus can just block sometimes. So yep. there you go. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> it's just like that's the big baddie in standard yeah. right now. Like I goals. said, maybe it's just gotten better. Like they just figured out how to make it better. Like I think the ones I was looking at before yeah. didn't have Kenrith. In Kenrith, them. I think, is pretty new. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we Ooh. thought we'd all be crying about Oko day and night. Yeah. But it turns out we're just crying about zombies. <laughs> I mean, Oko's still annoying. Don't yes. get us wrong. And I, I predict that if perhaps that October 21st move up ban yeah. Um, does see the departure of either Golos or Field of the Dead. Yeah. Th- then maybe Oko will become more of a pesky, ne- a little nuisance. Yeah, I th- As I fairies think so. are wont to be. Yeah, I think that fits Oko's personality. Yeah. Um, Simic Food yeah. is another deck that we're going to see at this Mythic Championship. So this is one I think that was pretty popular, like, right out of the gates mm-hmm. when Eldraine was printed because people identified that a three-mana Planeswalker that does basically anything you want is pretty yes. good. <laughs> hey, do you know what's good? Three-mana Walkers. Yes. So also, I've seen this deck regularly cl- cast Oko's on turn two. Turn two, ab- absolutely. And its other powerhouse card, Nissa. Yeah. On turn four. Yeah. This, which is, is someone casting Anissa who shakes the world on turn four is just brutal. It is honestly like, let's just let's just say let's it. Say it like it is. It is tough. <laughs> Gilded Goose and Inur- in- enables a turn uh, to Oko. <laughs> in <herbals. laughs> So that's another card you've got to watch uh, out for. I don't know why. In herbals. <laughs> it herbals. So, it enerbles it. It was so funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> the deal with this deck is not only casting an Ooh. early Nissa and an early Oko, but also using food to your benefit in other ways. And what the way I'm thinking of right now is Wicked Wolf. Yeah, this is the one that we were talking about last week that it's surprising. Yes, Because this is. seems kind of like a card that 
it's a good rare to have in limited. Yeah, but yeah. Like in standard, standard, you're just like, what? It's a it's a three three for four that fights something when it yeah. comes in. Yeah. Cool. The reason this card is so good in the food deck is because of food. If you can sacrifice yeah. food, Wicked Wolf gets a plus one plus one counter and gains indestructible end of until end of turn. So it survives absurd. those time wipes yeah. and stuff. It's so good. Yeah. That's quite that's quite a good effect. Quite a good effect. Quite a good effect. <laughs> yeah. So yep. that is uh that's food. So it's 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 kind of a little bit of a beat down deck, but it's also playing a little bit of tempo, the tempo game with Oko Thief mm-hmm. of Crowns. It also has Questing Beast. Oh which gosh. that thing is a, it's a little house. Hey, if you're playing green, I yeah. mean like think about questing beasts it in is. your life. It is a heck of a thing. It I does everything. The most impressive thing is in all of that huge text box on Questing Beasts, yeah. one of the things that it says is that when it deals combat damage to a player, it, you can have it deal that much damage to a planeswalker that they control, yeah. which is just brutal. Yeah. Because you don't have to choose. No, you just You're just face. like, just, I'll just attack them. And then I, as a side benefit, also get to kill their planeswalker. This is a way to get around those zombies as well, because zombies can't block yes. this, this Questing Beast. That's right. So... That is, that's another way to deal some damage to that What deck. a little beastie. Hold on, I want to go back to Golos really quickly. Yeah, yeah. I was just remembering how, um, I was thinking of Realm Cloaked Giant. Yeah, there are the sweeper. What a surprising card. I remember the first <laughs> time that I saw it cast in that, in that pro league a yeah. couple weeks ago. I was just like, what, what? <laughs> oh yeah, just what as board this? sweeper and then you can play 7-7 seven, seven like, if later you want. On, and it was funny because a lot of times they wouldn't even bother for a long time. Eventually they would cast the 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So both of these decks, I would yeah. say, if you're looking for a deck that is highly, highly competitive, can definitely win, mm-hmm. these two are going to be up your alley. They're very, very strong. Yeah. And uh, you're, they're going to require but some But maybe mythics. don't invest in those Seeds <laughs> of the Dead and Goloses <laughs> quite yet. I mean, that's my big question. Like, if they ban them, are we going to get reimbursed on Magic on Arena? That's what they did. I would think so. When Nexus of Fate was, um, yeah. was banned, you got... I th- Think I want to say you got four wild mythic wild cards. Yeah, I would think yeah. so. So you you'll get them because I had obviously invested in, <laughs> in four decks of fate. You I certainly had. had. If they had let me purchase eight, I might have. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is my current deck that I've been battling with, at least an iteration of it in standard, which is Golgari Adventure. Oh, so do you like drawing <laughs> cards? Uh, I mean, I do. It turns Ooh. out, Megan, but I prefer to draw them. <laughs> From my creature activation. I mean, classic. <laughs> if you can have it all, why not have it all? Yeah, that's true. Uh, this deck is built around, of course, the adventure mechanic and kind of abusing that with the card Edgewall Innkeeper. So Edgewall Innkeeper is a little 1-1 one, one for 1. Just a 1-1 one, one for Another 1. Another surprising card to see in standard. Yes. <laughs> but whenever you cast a creature that has adventure, you get to draw oh, a card. God. Draw a card. Oh. I've seen people draw a lot of cards on yeah. Edgewall Innkeeper. So ideally, your Edgewall Innkeeper comes down on turn one, and then on turn two, you're casting something like your Foulmire Knight to draw mm-hmm. a card, or even your, what am I thinking, a Murderous Rider to draw a card, anything mm-hmm. like that, just to get your advantage off of Edgewall Innkeeper as soon as possible. Um, something about this deck, I will say, is um, it's, you know, Edgewall Innkeeper on turn one is monumentally important. Yes. If you don't have it, I don't think this deck is very good. Yeah. I think it's that seems correct. below medium. Um, and I think like the flip side of that is if you're playing against this deck, if you just take care of those, oh, you you're going to be okay. You need to kill it. <laughs> yeah. I know it's and just a one, one for one. if you don't kill it, you will be in trouble. You will be sorry. Take care of it. So the other plus sides to playing this deck is, of course, you're going to be playing Questing Beast, even Mm -hmm. though it doesn't have an adventure tacked onto it. Same thing with Rankle Master of Pranks, Mm -hmm. or as I like to call it, Rankle Master of Prankles, um, to be able to just kind of mess with your opponent, make them discard, make them lose life, make them sacrifice their one big creature, anything like that. And it can come out fast and early with cards like Lovestruck Beast, which is a 5-5 for 3. Man, Lovestruck Beast, what a house. Oh, it's so good. What a solid buddy. The new innovation in this deck or at least relatively new is that it's also playing vivian arcbow ranger oh i love vivian arcbow ranger and she is a plus in this deck that card is hot you want to know why why because not only do you get to put counters on things and give them trample and smash mm-hmm. face which we talked about evasion being important earlier but also you get to fight your creatures yeah with their creatures and if you have a five five in play it's like guess what i mean it's not even gonna fight sorry it does it just does, it just does damage. damage yeah Dang, it's kids. gonna kill it it's going to yeah, kill that Skargan Hellkite. You know what I mean? Poof. 
it's going to kill whatever their other questing beast. Yeah. I mean, or, and you can fight your Falmire Knight on something. It has death touch. Very, very pretty. There's an, we need a word. Very what do we count it, call it for fight that's like one sided? Punch. Punch. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. It punches it. Yeah. Because I keep saying fight and I mean punch. You mean punch. Yeah. Kapow. Kapow. So that's yeah. a super fun thing about this deck. If it gets in, if it gets all of its engines running smoothly, it's really fun because you just keep accruing card advantage. You keep playing creatures, which is, you know, something I like to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. That's Golgari Adventure. No clover in uh, this list that we're looking at here from uh, Piotr Glogowski, but one one competitor did bring, bring a list with Lucky Clover. So get d- double those activations. All right. Um, Bant Ramp is a deck uh, submitted here by Stanislav Sifka why, for the tournament. Why would you, why would you do this? Well. <laughs> so this one is just trying to go even harder on the ramp strategy. And yes. its whole plan is to get Nissa out on turn four. Okay. It's like that's the deck's entire plan. I mean, that's a solid, as we mentioned just a minute ago. That's a plan. I mean, like, if you're going to go all in on something, that is something to go all yeah. in on, I think. This is something, uh, yeah, that, that. Five mana Nissa, something to go all in on. And Stanislav Sivka uh, teamed up with Andre Strosky for this de- deck list, and those two have been churning out some really popular things pretty recently. A four color Dreadhorde list, uh, oh, Cathis yeah. Combo came out of that Dang. house. They called the Czech House where they're making these decks because <laughs> <laughs> they're Czech players. <laughs> Czech House also just seems like somewhere that you should be able to purchase like a fancy gingerbread house. <laughs> Maybe you can. It's like a bakery. Maybe you can. Uh, sorry, turn three, Nissa. I said turn four. Me I meant that? turn three. So I grew up in Texas, um, and when I was in when I was in college at UT, I I fenced a lot. Um, Megan put up fences around people's houses. I just I fence, <laughs> put up a lot of fences. <laughs> and um, on the weekends when we would have fencing tournaments, a lot of time you're driving north to like Dallas or something, and there's this stop between Austin and Dallas called the Czech Stop, but it's like Czech, you know, like. Czech Republic Czech. Yeah. Um, and they they have a kol- like a lot of kolaches and that sort of thing. So. What's a kolache? This is such a weird thing to explain to people because in my mind, I thought that everyone knew this. No. Right? It's like as, in my mind, it was as ubiquitous as a Danish. What's a Danish? Just kidding. <laughs> oh I boy. I don't know what a kolachki is. is. I know what a tchotchke is. A, a kolache <laughs> is like a... It's like a pastry thing. Oh, okay. And there's like sweet ones and there's savory ones, kind of like Danishes, except I don't think that there's savory Danishes. Oh. Really. Um, but there's, yeah, so like, it's kind of like a little like roll thing and sometimes it has like stuff in, it just has stuff inside. I don't know. A roll with stuff inside. I can yeah. get behind that. It's, they're good, you know? <laughs> a chalachki. A chalach. What did you call it? A kolachi. A kolachi. Okay. It's going to take me a while. I thought that everyone knew. Anyways, point is, check stop. That's why I was like, bakery. Okay. So the deal with this deck, turn three, Nissa. Yes. I said turn four. I meant turn three. But you meant turn three. Dang. So super, super You want to go like Gilded Goose Gross Spiral Nissa. Yeah. And that hot and like if you can do that pretty consistently, and you're gonna win a lot you're of you're gonna GG. win a lot of matches of magic. Another Golos iteration is Golos Fires, uh, which is p- playing Fires of Invention. I like Fires of Invention. Fire decks. of Invention is a very cool deck. Yes, gosh, I like all of these decks. All right, Megan, what are you pointing at? Oh, the, I definitely just heard the mouse over there. Oh, it's alive! It's alive. <laughs> oh, no. I was so worried that's what you were pointing at. All right, Mouse, there's still more Cheetos for you over there. Anyways, what were we talking about? Fires of Invention. That's right, Fires of Invention. So a lot of Fires of Invention deck don't play yes. the Golos, aren't, aren't doing the, the Golos thing. No. But this one that we're looking at here is from Autumn Burchett, is playing Golos, and is playing Fires of Invention. So it's kind of a combination yeah. of two popular decks. Like, why not? Fires of Invention is a cool card that basically allows you to cast any spell in your hand as long as its mana cost is equal to the number of lands that you have in play. Yes. You can only cast two spells in your turn, and you can't cast anything on your opponent's turn is the drawback. But you basically, you're basically doubling your mana on your turn. Yeah, which essentially. Which is very powerful. And no mana color requirements either. Yeah. So That's you can true. play some just wild stuff. Just go for it. Just go for it. And yep. you set yourself up with Drawn from Dreams mm-hmm. to make sure you never run out of gas. You pl- I've seen decks play Kenrith, mm-hmm. which makes a lot of sense because you have all this open mana. This deck has two copies of Kenrith. All right, great. Yep, it obvi- obviously also has Hydroid Crassus. Oh, yeah. 
Um, agent of treachery. Yuck. Very, very nice. That agent is so treacherous. <laughs> so treacherous. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little, like, I, I'm skeptical. Yeah. That this is going to be, like, why play this over Bant Ramp? Or Bant Golos, I mean. Um, you know, I guess. Is my question. What would my answer be? My answer might be, you have the ability to play what I see here is four copies of Fae of Wishes. That is true. That's pretty nice. Which allows you to go get anything you want out of your sideboard. That's that's very good. That's a good reason. <laughs> so Nico Bolas Dragon God. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Plain okay. wide celebration. I'm into it. Casualties of war. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, it's giving you a little bit of a toolbox element. Okay. How that could be best better against Golos I'm not is not totally sure but those are some good cards <laughs> you've started, you've <laughs> to, started to convince me it also has it does have three deafening clarion yeah which is board. which is very nice and deafening clarion remember like the modes on that are you can pick both yeah deal three to everything and creatures you control get lifelink which I've seen be like an actual that's true consideration in this deck yeah um I I kind of like this combo yeah I don't know. I guess we'll see how it plays out for Autumn. Um, but a really, really cool list here yeah. from Autumn coming up at the tournament. So people are who now we're going to move on to people who are like, I'm off Golos entirely. Yes. <laughs> we're just going to try and smash face. Yes. We, we, our, our way to beat Golos is to go fast and go hard. Yes. Uh, notably, Javier Dominguez coming in with Gruel Aggro. All right. Hello. Pelt, four Pelt Collector. Get in there, Pelt Collector. Four Zerta Goblin. <laughs> Four Gruel Spellbreaker, four Bone Crusher Giant, three Skargan Hellkite, like four Questing Beasts. Just it's just, just beef on this the board. Like, here we're I'm here to fight you. It's like deal with it. Yeah, I'm playing huge creatures and I'm just turning them sideways. What yep. do you want from me? Guess what? I will play. I will play a three three on turn two. Yeah. Do you want to what know you how? What you gonna do? But this deck can do. Too, which is pretty fun because it's also playing Ember Cleave, which is a new equipment mm -hmm. uh, from Throne of Eldrain that gives plus one, plus one, double strike and trample. That's right. To a creature and costs less to, um, to, based on how many attacking creatures that you have in play and you can yeah. flash it in. Ooh, that's, I okay, like that. So put that that's on a, spicy. Put that on your questing beast. Yeah. Okay, because remember questing beast has, has death touch and now it's getting trample from this equipment. And then we're going to cast Collision Colossus, which gives plus four, plus two. How much damage uh, is that, everybody? That, I don't even know. 17. One billion. 17. <laughs> 17? Sure. And even One if billion. you're like, I block it with my, who cares how big it is? <laughs> it doesn't matter because. I block with my, who cares? <laughs> because remember the uh, interaction between Death Touch and Trample is you ha only have to assign lethal, which is one point of damage. <laughs> and then the rest will come through as Trample damage. Yeah. So. Dang. If you like to smash nice. face in a big way. <laughs> Consider this. Deck. Consider this. Yeah. All right. I mean, I think that deck has a good chance on uh, g giving Golos a run for its money. Run for its money. Yeah. Same. Um, next up, we have Bant Food. Andrea Mangucci is playing this deck. Um, it has kind of. It's the same thing as the Simic Food. Yeah. Except it has more colors. Okay. There you go. <laughs> the <laughs> we, end. We wrapped that one up pretty nicely. Ooh, Mardu Knights. Okay, I'm into this. Ben Stark bringing Mardu Knights. Spicy. I like yeah, it. Yeah. This is. Uh, this is obviously. <laughs> Obviously, an aggro deck. Yep. It has four copies of Knight of the Ebon Legion. I love it. Four copies of Cutest Card Weaselback Red Cap. Who could have seen that coming? Almost nobody. I will bring this one drop to the Mythic Championship. <laughs> Guess what? I have a one one for one. I mean, let's go. Hey, who am I to question Ben Stark on this? Doesn't uh, even. <laughs> Does not even have haste. You know what I, I? You know what I love is that this was a deck that I was really hoping to emerge out of Throne of Eldraine because yeah. I pushed it pretty hard, mm -hmm. but it just doesn't seem to be doing all of that much in standard. But I'm really happy that Ben is like taking this to the to the top level of play and being like, yeah. you know what? I believe in it. Let's so, see it. Black Lands Paragon, that 3-1 hasty knight that gives something lifelink and death touch, another knight yeah. that you control, or sorry, a knight that you control, fervent champion, inspiring veteran, which gives all of your knights plus one, plus one, mm -hmm. and three copies of Ember Cleave as well, because hey, why not? I mean, if you're attacking with a lot of things, you might as well get that Ember Cleave in there. Yeah, this is an aggro player's dream. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> if you like to turn little dudes sideways, this is the deck for you. Get on, get on. On in there i should try i'm gonna try that one on arena that looks fun yeah next up we have celestia adventure yeah i watched reed duke play this deck a lot in one of the eldrain splits for the mpl yep. notable card that is playing fairy guide mother this is my favorite okay. card in the deck because yeah. if you pair it with your love struck beast yeah it comes in the air and hits you for seven 
Whoa. <laughs> so, like, there's not a lot that can deal with that currently. No. Uh, in, in standard, if you've got your defenses down. Yeah. Seven hitting you in the face is a real deal. Um, and it's an, it's an aggressive deck, just like, you know, the ones we've talked about before. You're able to play a venerated Loxodon really early on turn mm -hmm. three. You can pump that thing out with and make your rest of your team huge. And or essentially... Giant Killer. Oh, yeah. Giant Killer is a really yeah. cool card in this deck. Um, they're saying, like, um, deal with this or you're dead. Yeah. Basically, do you have that time wipe? Classic. Do you have that Realm Cloak Giant? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's even too late. Oh, two Flax and Intruder. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, sure. one drop with it with adventure to trigger your edge wall innkeeper, mm -hmm. which is also in this deck. Why not? <laughs> um, we have Kenji coming in with four color Golos. All right, Kenji, get yeah. it, get it. Uh, even more colors. So even like, more. Why not? Go for it, I guess. Why not? <laughs> this one notably has three Oko in it. Okay, cool. So, so um. I love all these decks pack an Ashiok Dream Render in the sideboard to help yep. deal with Colos decks. <laughs> uh, then there's a Jeskai Fires. Okay. Which I it's like these Beach. ones. Um, these, these are another... Fires of the Fires of... Fires of Invention. Invention deck. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Jeskai version. Yeah. Playing Sarkin the Masterless here. Oh, and this has four Narset, four and three Sarkin, and four Teferi Time Raveler. So one Eugene the Ineffable. Nice. I'm into this deck. So we're basically making five five dragons with this. Yeah, which like, let's I just, love. Let's just make some drag dragons. I mean, like let's that's some draggy. That's how you fly over, fly over your zombies yeah. and smash face. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, Faye of Wishes being like a big player in this. Yeah, Faye of Wishes getting all that yeah. good stuff out of the sideboard once again. This doesn't have so some a lot of the earlier versions of this deck had a whole bunch of the cavaliers like the yeah. blue and the red ones yeah and i have to say i'm like i get it they're you know maybe they were just too much yeah um, I but i am sad to not see them because i love watching those cards go they are cool they are very cool but i i do think that there's just better options yeah unfortunately unfortunately <laughs> Wow, Caleb Durward, uh, streamer who you might know, is bringing Jund Midrange to the <laughs> standard <Sure>. tournament. <laughs> All right, Why Caleb. Not? You know, it's doing the classic Jund thing, which is just powerful things. What What are the best cards in the format? Exactly. I'll play them. There's four questing beasts, four Skargan Hellkites, four Gruel Spellbreakers. So just like some bit, four Bone Crusher Giants. Rotting Regisaur. Wow. That's the 7-6 or yeah. is it the 7-5? Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is... 7-6, I want to say. It's a three mana 7-6 dino. Yeah. That says uh, on your upkeep, you have to discard a card. Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, it's... I love it. Growth Chamber Guardian. Mm -hmm. Rick's Mahdi Reveler to help uh, sculpt your hand. Yeah. I mean, it's just... It's like... It's big, solid creatures and some... You know, like some removal and just more big creatures. Why not? Can you imagine a rotting Regisaur wearing an Ember Cleave? Because he's also playing that card. <laughs> uh, take 14. Yeah. Why Thank not? You. Thank you. You'll why be taking not? 14. Ooh. And... <laughs> this of course. is my personal favorite. Uh, mono red cavalcade. Yay! Lishi Tian is playing this deck, which seems like a meme deck. I mean, it is a meme deck. People are playing it like just for fun, yeah. for funsies. Like I built it because I wanted to ladder up super quickly in some kind of. I can't really remember why I was doing this. Yeah. Some kind of tournament or something, and I was like, "Oh, I'll put this together." You don't need really <laughs> very many, you know, expensive cards. You don't need any rares. You just play a bunch of little tiny dudes, and hopefully, you've got your cavalcade of calamity and play giving them all an additional damage when they connect yeah or when they attack sorry just wild i mean and lee shitan is like yeah i'm playing this that deck. seems like it and lee shitan has an auto day two in this tournament thanks yeah. to winning a core split so. i hope we get to see this deck in the top eight <laughs> there's four copies of torbrin in here yeah torbrin. Now too. thane of redfell and i think uh, hold on megan thane of redfell <laughs> <laughs> thank you how you have to say it um <laughs> And I think that that triggers right with the cavalcade. Oh, does it? Oh, man. Like, let me read. Let's read. That's Torbrin. a great question, because Torbrin is going to make any red source that mm -hmm. would, you know, it double it deals two instead or whatever. Go on, just uh, just happen over to Scryfall right now. Oh, we love Scryfall, everybody. Yeah, if you have any magical searches you need to do in your life, consider Scryfall. Okay. If a red source you control would yeah. deal damage to an opponent yeah. or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. I feel like, yes. So you get... Because Cavalcade of Calamity is red. 
So you would get three instead of one from every single attack trigger. Right? Oh, whenever a creature you control with power one or less attacks, Cavalcade of Calamity deals one damage. Yeah, so yes. it just transforms it into three. Holy cow. <laughs> I love this. Wow. The funniest thing is I played against this deck several times on the ladder and Thorbin has been out. What's his name? Torbrin. <laughs> Sorry, Torbran, whatever, has been out and I've just immediately killed it. So I've never yeah. had the opportunity to see it actually interact with Cavalcade. Oh, because you would be dead if I you did. I would be dead. You'd be Wow, Real glad if that happened. I love it. <laughs> Great job, LST. Thank you for bringing oh, this deck. Spicy. Thumbs I cannot up. wait. I mean, like, Golos, get wrecked. Mm -hmm. You're going to be dead before you can do anything is the is the idea here. Ooh, there's also a Rakdos Sacrifice deck. I have been seeing this as well on the ladder, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like an Aristocrats deck, which is what yeah. we call decks that kind of sacrifice little creatures and do incremental damage. It has four copies of Mayhem Devil, which pings when you sacrifice things. Yes. Uh, four Claim the Firstborn. This is going to deep. steal things <laughs> and then sacrifice them okay. into it. Okay. Can you just imagine? Because Claim the Firstborn can like hit a Hydroid Crassus. That's true. Just be like, steal your Hydra Crassus, hit you with you it, and then sacrifice it. <laughs> oh, that's so scary. It can kill you out of nowhere. Yeah. I really like this. Four Cauldron Familiar. Yeah. Like, why not? Because you got to do use that combo with Witch's Oven, because this deck is playing mm -hmm. four Witch's Ovens. Four Witch's Put the cat ovens. in the oven, ping your opponent. No, don't ever put the cat in the oven. <laughs> I mean, Megan, I hate to tell you, this cat's turning in, this cat's going in the oven. This cat's turning into a it's pie. It's turning into food. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then you give the cat some food and it come back. <laughs> this cat. This is a, a really messed up cat. Yeah, this cat oven combo is it's pretty dark to talk about. It yeah. gets a little grim, but mm. that is what it does. Yeah. Judith the Scourge Diva is hanging out in here, as well as Priest of the Forgotten Gods. All right. So I am uh, I'm pretty excited to see this one. I hope it yeah. does well. Same. <laughs> cat Same. combo, cat oven combo. All right. I mean, like, I'm excited to see all of these things in action. I mean, that's a great field of decks yeah i was trying not to say field because of field of the dead but you know what i mean no, that's a great field of the deads um and those are going to be what's going to be on display at the mythic championship um what deck's going to take it all down what are you are you going to make a bet here on who's going to win Ooh. okay i, I want to pick a deck oh a deck to win okay yeah. go for it I, I mean i have my choice so i'm gonna go i'm gonna say it yeah i'm I just, I don't want to be a pessimist, but I feel like it's just going to be a Golos deck. I'm a, All I'm, right, Maria's going to be the pessimist who I'm picks gonna, Golos. I'm going to be pessimist, picking Golos and Seth Manfield to win, because right. I saw him win, take down that E-League showdown, and it was just disgusting. Yeah, I'm going to be spicy. I'm going to pick Bant food. All right, Bant food. Yeah. There All right, Bant food. How about that? Um, normal Golos. How about that? If none of those decks sound appealing to you, I just want to briefly touch on yeah. some more fun decks. Tell that, us about them. Uh, that you can play too. Mono Black Aggro. That's a real deck. Nice. Everybody. So if you are like, I just want a simpler, more a, a straightforward deck that I probably have a lot of the cards for, consider Mono Black Aggro. You can still play cards like your Gutter Bones, your Footlight Fiend, your Knight of the Ebon Legion, Order mm -hmm. of Midnight from Throne of Eldraine, Midnight Reaper, Murderous Rider. Um, Ayara, First of Lockthwain. Yes. Our preview card nice. is in this deck. That's pretty cool. Spawn of Mayhem, Wrinkle. This deck is competitive. Yeah, I like it. And it's also it. very fun. Yeah. Super it, straightforward. Very much so. So that that one's pretty fun. Um, a deck that I have been having a good time with recently. Oops, that's not what I wanted to click on. Sorry. <laughs> um, has been a deck that actually Kenji brought to my attention. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been iterating on it for a little while now. And it's an Is It Phoenix or a Draw 2 deck based on... Oh, yeah, you were telling me about this. Improbable I really Alliance. like this. So this is the newest version that I've seen Kenji play that I'm going to pull up here. Um, that is, of course, playing four copies of Improbable Alliance, which whenever you draw your second card a turn, you get a 1-1 one, one fairy. Mm -hmm. um, and plays cards that kind of abuse that, like Iron Craig Pyromancer, which will just bolt people out of nowhere. Four copies of Fairy Vandal mm -hmm. in this list. Ooh, and a niv Mizzet Perrin. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, three Royal Scions here to mm -hmm. enable your, your extra card draw, Thrill of Possibility, Radical Idea to draw those extra cards. Yeah. Uh, it can get out of control pretty quickly. I enjoy that. This looks like fun. This looks up it's my alley. It's a very fun deck. 100% yeah. is a fun deck. Is it a, a real deck? 
I don't know, but it is very fun to play, and it did yeah. beat me last night. So Ooh, there is still a Simic Flash running around. Yeah, Simic Flash is still out there, everybody. So nice. It's not dead yet, unfortunately. <laughs> and we talked about a Celestian Adventure, and we talked about Mard- Mardu Knights. Boros Knights is also a build mm-hmm. that you can consider if you only want two colors. <laughs> if you're like three colors is too many for me to care about. Yeah. Um, but Megan, I gotta ask you, like, which one of these decks appeals to you the most? Draw two. You want it to play the draw, draw two? It says draw right. two in the title. I like it. Of course, I want to play it. I mean, our, we did play a lot of Is It Phoenix, like yeah, a couple stands. I really ago. enjoy playing Is It Phoenix, and so yeah, give me something that draws two cards or more a turn. Yeah, that deck is awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, I was very close to hitting Mythic a couple seasons ago with Orza Vampires. Yeah. And this current standard, I don't feel like there is any deck that I want to play that will help me achieve that goal again that's fine you know you have to have different goals every season sometimes that's true sometimes you can be like i have a deck that i love and it's competitive i'm gonna rank up that ladder i feel like i missed my chance megan your chance will come round again okay all right chance is coming round the mountain (laughs) (laughs) that just sounds like you know a 10 year old you know boy Chances coming round the mountain and he's late for soccer practice. (laughs) He has a bloody nose and he's eating a (laughs) go-gurt. It's just what I see for Chance's life. He's eating a go-gurt. Why does he have a bloody nose? I don't know. He probably fell or something. He has a lot going on in his life. He's late for (laughs) soccer practice and his nose is currently already bleeding. And Mm -hmm. while while his nose is bleeding... He's eating a gogurt. Yeah, and it's bleeding into the gogurt. It's no. really gross. But he's ten, and he's chance, and that's All just right. how he rolls. All right. <laughs> so there you go. There's a look at some of the top decks in standard. If you have a favorite that we didn't mention, please feel free to tweet at us at GLHF Magic, because uh, we want to know. Yep. Let's say thank you to our other sponsor, Ultra Pro. That's right. Maria, look, I didn't think I would ever be the owner of a land station because most of them are dumb. But what about this <laughs> but one? This one is beautiful this and I love so it. This is so nice. This is our one from Ultra Pro. Yeah. It is gorgeous. It is so nice. I love it. You I can't can get over anywhere. how nice it is. Look at this. Like, yeah. There's, there's you can little lift out the little trays. Are acrylic boxes for each of the land yes. types and they've been embossed with the land logo. Ugh. Yeah. So, it's so nice. So if you need like to put, pass them around the table mm-hmm. or something, you can take them out, pass them around, yep. put them back in their little stand here. It's it's perfect. I love this. My only here's what I'm going to suggest. Ultra Pro, hear me out. What if you made one that was one longer and it had a spot for non basic? Ooh. What about that? I suppose you could do that. Just hear me out. This is, I think, um, we've been talking on yeah. the Upkeep this week, our news podcast. We talked about some new stuff from Magic that, as gift ideas for the holidays. This, this I think, is a really good one. Is a number one gift idea because, like, people no one don't wants, have, exactly. have these. And no one wants to go out and be like, I'm going to buy myself one of these. Because yeah. it is a very, like, practical thing at the end of the yeah. day. But it's something that you want. So, yes. one, be practical and get your, this for yourself because you will be so happy that you did. Oh, my gosh. Or, two, get it for someone you know that plays magic because they're going to really appreciate yeah. it. Get your life organized. And it's a beautiful thing that you don't have to worry about being on display. If you're like, I don't want to put my magic stuff on display. Well, it looks it really looks nice. It looks really nice. So, like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Ultra Pro. Head to their website or cardgame.com slash GLHF. That sells a lot of Ultra Pro merchandise. Suckers! <laughs> That's been another it's our episode. episode. <laughs> Good luck, high five. We talked a lot of standard in this episode. Yeah, Megan. we did. And I feel so up to date. Oh yeah, we know what's going on. I'm informed. Are you informed? You are now. Yeah, you are. And you can watch all of these decks that we talked about in action at Mythic Championship 5 coming up this weekend, Friday through Sunday on twitch.tv slash magic every morning starting at 9 a.m. Pacific. I'll be there being like, what's up on coverage. Megan will be there yeah. being like, what's up on social media. Mm-hmm. So go like and retweet yeah. the stuff that she tweets yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Come say hi and chat. Um, and, you know, root for whoever you want to win the whole thing. There'll mm-hmm. be 36 members of the MPL playing 32 challengers. Whew. Or wait, it's 32. Oh, yeah. MPL, I had this reversed. Yeah. yeah. 32 MPL, 36 challengers, four people not playing in day one because they've auto day two'd. I mean, Man. who's going to take it all down? Will it be a challenger again like last time? Oh, that would be exciting. Matias Leverado winning. Yeah. He won, you know, an MCQ on Arena. And takes home $100,000. Dang. Changes life his changing. life. So are we going to see something like that happen again? Or are we going to see like an MPL member be like, no, this is our this playground. Is 
Yeah. We're, yeah. I, I don't know. But now you're so informed that we're going to call you a 1099 EZ. <laughs> You've been sitting on that show. Literally a full minute. <laughs> Save it for April. <laughs> wow. You're welcome. As always, head over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash GLHF magic. If you want to become a pumpkin supporter, a pumpkin patron. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a pumpkin patron. And thank you to everyone who is yes. already a pumpkin patron. Absolutely. They're all pumpkins in our hearts. That's so true. And thank you to our sponsors, Card Kingdom and Ultra Pro. We really could not ask for better sponsors. You're all so gourd, which I meant to say good. No, you didn't. But it No, uh, you don't even. It just sounded like they got gourd like by like a bowl. Oh, yeah. This didn't work out. Like a pumpkin. But you meant like a squash. Like a, yeah. Like a, oh. Like a pumpkin. <sighs> God. <laughs> <laughs>